Shri Guru Bhionamaha. Welcome to a new session of your Social Science Children. In this session, we are going to start with a new lesson in history, which is all about yearly Janapadas and Mahajanapadas. Let us see what it is, right? Before going into the lesson, we should have a very small introduction about how this started, what it is. Before understanding that, we should know a particular part which is called as Vedic civilization, which we are going to see now. So, as we know that Harappan civilization, we have studied about Harappan civilization. So, after the decline of Harappan civilization, okay, people scattered all over the country. They moved from Harappa and Mohanjadaro and they started settling in various places. We have seen that. So, after that, many cultures began to spread throughout India. Okay. So, one of that important civilization that started, okay, it started in north and the northwestern part of our country. Okay. So, that was called as Vedic age or Vedic civilization. So, this emerged around 1500 BCE. Fine. So, this was the period that came just after this Harappan civilization. We call it as Vedic civilization. So, it was called so. Why it was called as Vedic civilization? Because in many information about this particular period, okay, many information which we have got about this particular period is in the form of text. Okay. So, uh, we have understood about this period and the people who lived in this period through the text that they composed. The people who lived in this period, they composed some text and that is what we call it as Vedas. Okay. So, the term Veda is a Sanskrit word okay, which came from Vid. Okay. So, the meaning of the word Vid is to know to learn. Okay? So, that is called as Veda. So, they are the collection of hymns and verses praising the gods. Okay? So, the people then started praising the gods in a, a Sanskrit language. right? So, that is what we call it as Vedas. And this was composed somewhere between 1500 to 1200 BCE. So, this, was, this had happened from 1500 BCE up to this to 1200 BCE. So, the literature for, of this period we call it as Vedas, right? Now, there are four main Vedas, right? So, one is, first one is Rig Veda, which is the oldest one among the Vedas, okay? Among the four Vedas, this Rig Veda is the oldest one. Then comes Yajur Veda, then the third one is Sama Veda and the fourth one is the Atharva Veda, right? So, apart from these Vedas, what are all the literatures that we have received from this Vedic civilization? When we see that, we have also received many uh, literatures like the Brahmanas, the Aranyakas and the Upanishads. So, all these are the various verses which were composed in, in praising the God, fine. Then there are also other two important literatures which is, uh, which we call it as the great epics of our country. Yes, you know the word epic? Yes, idigasam in Tamil, right? So, the epics of our country, the two important epics of our country are Ramayana and Mahabharata, right? So, all these kinds of Vedic literatures were composed during this period. So, this Vedic people, okay, the people were called as Aryans, okay. They were called as Aryans. So, they originally lived, they first lived in Central Asia and the areas around the Caspian Sea, okay. So, what happened? They migrated to various places. Why did they migrate? Migration is nothing but moving from one place to another place. So, they started to migrate because 
of the food scarcity may be yes they did not have proper place to settle yes then they did not get proper fodder for their uh, for their uh, castles yes so like this for various reasons they moved from one place to another so that is what we call it as migration right yes then the word aryan means noble in sanskrit okay so they were the earliest see these aryans used iron then the wheeled horse drawn chariot okay so they were the earliest people who started using iron and the wheel horse drawn chariot okay so they started using wheel yes as a vehicle and which could be driven by horses okay so this started during this vedic civilization so this vedic age we divided it into two periods one is early vedic age and the other one is later vedic age so when it is early vedic uh, period it starts from 1500 bce and it lasts up to 1000 bce okay so it lasted for around 500 years and when it comes to later vedic period yes it lasted from 1000 bce up to 600 bce it lasted from 1000 bce up to 600 bce yes right so the that is how the vedic period was divided into two so now we are going to see about how the places or how the group of people were divided okay so uh, in our uh, new stone age itself we have seen that people started to live in groups and we call them as tribal groups yes we have seen that so the same way when it came to this vedic civilization see people have developed so much people have evolved so much so now what it was right we are going to see that first so the smallest unit of the society was the family okay so the family was otherwise called as kula okay so family was also called as kula and it was headed by grihapati okay so it was headed by grihapati who was the eldest male member of the family oldest male member of the family he was the head of the family okay the head of the family was called as grihapati and the family was also called as kula next the number of families together formed a village like structure which we called it as grama okay so number of families made up a village which was also called as grama and there was a head for a grama and he was called as gramani yes so family which is called as kula the head of the family is grihapati then the number of families together it is called as grama and the head of the grama was gramani then what happened number of small villages together okay that was recognized as a clan clan means a group of people who had similar uh, tradition or culture whatever okay so clan so uh, many villages together were called as clan which was also called as vis okay so this vis was headed by visapati yes the clan was called as vis and that vis was headed by visapati then several vis together okay that formed jana and that was headed by janapati or rajan the meaning of the word was king okay so the responsibility for this janapati or the king was to protect his people from the enemy so we have seen four units the first unit was family which was also called as kula so the head of the family was grihapati yes 
and from there many families together what had come yes village which was also called as grama so the head of the grama was gramani then many gramas or these many villages together formed clan which is vis so the head of the vis was visapati and many vis together formed jana so the head of jana was janapati or rajan so this rajan was nothing but a king who had to protect his people right who had to protect the people who were under his control right yes now this is all about the introduction of this lesson okay so we have understood the term jana right jana is a group of many villages together yes so now we will get into the lesson children so janas were the largest political units in the vedic society headed by a king or rajan so the territories of janas grew much more bigger okay so these janas when it became bigger that was called as janapadas okay so janapadas words meaning is foothold of the tribe okay so a very big group of people okay this janas were grown that is what we call it as janapadas then these were the first states of indian subcontinent so this is how the states of our country was formed fine so that is what we call it as janapadas now and these janap janapadas which were much larger and much more powerful than the others okay so those janapadas which were larger and powerful we call it as maha janapadas maha means big so even more bigger janapadas okay so by this 6th century bce when we were around the 6th century there were 16 maha janapadas in india there were 16 important maha janapadas in india so of these four were very important which were magadha kosala vatsa and avanti these four are very important maha janapadas clear so magadha kosala vatsa and avanti are the four important maha janapadas fine so here you could see magadha here you could see avanti and here you could see kosala and here you could see vatsa so this map consists of 16 important maha janapadas of our country you could just see one two sorry three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Thirteen, fourteen, yes, fifteen and sixteen, right? So these sixteen were the Mahajanapadas, and out of which these four Kosala, Vatsa, Magadha, and Avanti were the most important Janapad Mahajanapadas, right? So now, so we have seen what is Mahajanapadas now. So uh, from how did we learn about this Mahajanapadas? that is from the vedic literatures and also from the buddhist text okay so we have got to understand about this mahajanapadas so this buddhist text also includes jataka tales fine so some archaeological evidences have also been found from places like hastinapura atranji khera which is located in uttar pradesh and also from patna in bihar okay so we have also got some archaeological evidences for this particular period 
So these archaeological evidences includes the potteries which were painted in grey and red, yes, and then the iron weapons and also the agricultural tools. All these have been found out from various places. So this growth of the small tribal Janapadas from Jana, they came Janapadas. So this Janapadas growth, okay, to Mahajanapadas, this happened during, this growth happened during this Vedic period, later Vedic period, fine. So this period also witnessed gradual spread of the Vedic people across the entire Indo-Gangetic plain. So, uh, during this period, people started spreading throughout the Indo-Gangetic plain also. With this, we have come to the end of this first part of the lesson. See you soon in the next part with more interesting details about this Mahajanapadas. To receive our online lessons, please press the subscribe button and you will receive our latest updates. Thank you. Shri Gurubhyo Namaha.